Good morning, everyone. Again, welcome to Ben Q's uh, January webinar. This morning, we're going to be discussing Ben Q Board's EDLA certified interactive displays. My name is Carly Burton Soleil. I'm with Ben Q Marcom here in Plano, Texas. I want to welcome you all to the webinar. Um, this morning, we're going to um, we're going to run through some differences and some 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 interesting tidbits on the new boards. Um, our new EDLA boards are our RP, which is our premium model, and our RM model, which is our mainstream model, both of which have EDLA capabilities. Uh, we're going to be talking about both models um, during this presentation. And then at the end of the quick walkthrough of some items on it, we're going to have a live demo um, with our FAE team, which is Ryan Hood and Francisco Flores. Uh, during the presentation this morning, um, we're going to have everybody in listen only mode. And then once we get to the um, once we get to the demo, we will turn things on and you can um, ask questions at that point. I will ask that everyone ask their questions, please, through the chat box or the questions box. And our team will log them and keep them ready so that when we go to the demo section and the demo portion, we can answer questions after that. Um, so for now, we're going to go ahead and get start started again. Good morning. My name is Carly Burton Soleil. Um, I am the marketing manager here for the B uh, BenQ Education team of North America. And we're going to talk about our BenQ board. So I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with our BenQ boards. I know looking at our registrations, um, quite a few of you are customers or resellers that we've worked with in the past. I want to welcome you to our webinar. Um, a little housekeeping for us to get started with. Um, again, like I said, my name is Carly Burton Soleil. I'm the marketing manager for BenQ Education. Our presenters during the demo section will be Francisco Flores and Ryan Hood. And we're going to be talking about unlocking interactive learning with our BenQ EDLA smart boards this morning. So uh, just real quickly, what we're going to hit on for the for the presentation this morning is what is EDLA certified boards mean? The EDLA is a term that is super popular right now. Everybody's talking about it, but I don't know how many people actually know what that means. So we're going to hit on a little bit of that. We're going to talk about the three distinct types of EDLA smart boards in the market that are going to be available so that as you're looking at new boards or looking at boards to uh, possibly upgrade to in the near future or um, in the next year or so, you'll have a better understanding of what the three different types of boards that are currently out there are going to be able to do for you. And then we're going to talk about why you would ever want to look at a BenQ board for that. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so what is an EDLA certified board? Basically, it is a seamless and licensed Google experience. You have access to everything that's within the Google Store. It uh, makes Google Classroom a seamless connection. Um, you're going to have Google Workspace for all of the educators. Um, you're going to have Google Classroom for all of your students. And it connects all of your Chromebooks, which we know many schools are using Chromebooks, very seamlessly with the content that's being created with the board. So all of your calendars, everything that you're used to is available within um, natively now within the BenQ board or within smart boards. Um, it also adds to the capabilities of any board that has EDLA capability and the fact that because it connects to Google, it gives you uh, the ability to have a higher level of security or enhanced security. It allows you to have safer browsing. And allows you to make sure that all of your apps are safe because they go through the Google Play Store, which means they have to be vetted. And then they have to have, it also provides you with a certain level of privacy um, so that you make sure that data from your apps and data from what you're utilizing isn't shared in other places. So you get that additional level of security that makes schools and IT directors very, very happy and more comfortable with what they're utilizing. Um, like we talked about a minute ago, you get access to everything that's within the Google Play Store. So if you're currently utilizing um, any of the apps below or a hundred other apps, you now can natively access them within the board, within any EDLA smart board through the Google Play Store. Um, there will be no more side loading or any of that kind of good stuff. So all of that is possible with our BenQ board moving forward. So let's talk about the three different types of EDLA boards that are being brought to market this, this January of 2024. So the three different types are we have a generic version, a proprietary version, and a multi-user version. So when we talk about generic, we're talking about if you any of you have a smartphone, let's just think they're all Androids. I know quite a few people use an iPhone, but let's think of it as basically your board is your phone. Anything that you have because you're going to log in with a with a with a generic 
Google um, email address and account, um, anything that you have tied to that account will now be accessible on the phone. So I don't know about you guys, but I personally don't let my kids dig through my phone because there might be stuff on there that I don't want them finding. That's going to be the issue with the generic version of a, of a board that is um, basically a Google phone. Um, the other one is the pro proprietary version, which some of our competitors have, um, that has the whole ecosystem built around a, um, a, four, a four fee based software. Um, so you have to go into their proprietary platforms, some of which means that you have to put all of your data and information on a server that belongs to um, one of the board companies. Instead of it being owned and operated through yourself and through your school and accessible for you there, it's only available through their servers. Um, the other version, which is the BenQ board version, integrates with school identity management and allows teachers to use any board anywhere. So what does that look like for you? Why would you wanna look at a BenQ board then? Because we've set up the BenQ boards to be smart, simple, and secure, the three S's. We've been talking about three, the three S's for five years. Now we have smart with AI tools that come natively on the board. Um, it's very simple um, as we're gonna get into here in a minute. IT directors love the capabilities of the BenQ board because it seamlessly connects to your SSO and secure. All of your devices and accounts are secure because they are housed with you at the school. It is not housed on a BenQ server. So let's go through what some of that looks like. So <clears throat> many of you might be familiar with EasyWrite. It's our, our uh, whiteboarding software that comes um, subscription free with the board. Um, now, besides being able to do all of the whiteboarding capabilities you had, now you can join from any device. Our boards have often been known previously as open source. That's why we like to call it. Um, but now you can connect from any device to the board. So whether you're Android, um, PC, Mac, uh, Chromebook, all of those are accessible and any of the um, browsing um, platforms that you prefer are available on the board. It also allows you, like we said, to within EasyWrite 6, connect seamlessly to Google Classroom. So as you're building your lessons, you can build them from your laptop with EasyWrite 6 on your laptop and then just pull them up through your cloud drive on the board and have everything there. So you don't even have to have your laptop connected to the board. All of that is available within EasyWrite 6 with Google Classroom. Um, you can also arrange through Google Classroom as you're uploading things to your cloud drive. You can make them available to specific classes. You can import your lessons and you can manage permissions for those, those files that are within your Google Classroom natively through EasyWrite 6. So let's talk to the IT directors that are on the call here. So with our uh, device management system, which is DMS, you can now easily enroll all of your boards across all of your campuses and throughout the district easily by scanning a serial number on the board. Um, it'll make it where you can bind one or you can bind all, you can bind all of your boards uh, with a, a simple file upload and have all of your boards accessible from your desktop at your office. So you don't have to go out and touch every single board to get them up and running or to push updates and notifications. Also for IT directors and for superintendents in school districts, you're gonna get a capability to be able to see what is being used on your boards in the back end of DMS. You're gonna be able to see how much room is available, what apps are being used, what, what, um, what different um, web-based platforms are being used. And you can see all of that on the back end through a quick dashboard. And as we talked about briefly earlier, you can tie all of your accounts together with single sign-on with the BIN keyboard. It keeps all of, your, all of your teacher information and your student information on school servers, and it allows you to seamlessly set up um, the board so that the teachers can access all of their drives and any apps, things like that, that they want access to through the board directly. And the school manages all of that. So it's not as we like to call it, the wild, wild west of the boards. And as we talked about briefly earlier, IT directors are gonna love the fact that with IAM, you can now easily import and sync user lists from your directory services. 
um, every time you add or remove a user, um, it will the change will happen automatically. So you don't have to worry about going in and on the back end of everything within the district, you have to remove people when they leave. You don't have to worry about going in and doing that additionally on the boards in a different platform or in a different server or update something else. All of it's done seamlessly. So um, that's a quick overview on what the differentiation is with the BenQ boards and the new EDLA models. So I'm going to get ready. We're going to turn things over. Give me one second. And we're going to turn things over to Ryan and Francisco. Um, let me make let me make Ryan our presenter. All right. Ryan, Francisco, are you guys ready for us? Yeah, we are going to just show our webcam so we can um, uh, show you what the board looks like right now. Looks like, let me go ahead and zoom in real quick so we can see the board. Maybe flip flopped, but uh, yeah, we're just going to run through a couple little things for you guys that a lot of people don't know that this is a big differentiator. Like we're talking about the three different types of boards the Google SSO, the uh, Azure, and the local um, logins. Um, that's something that's very, very unique to BenQ. Nobody else has a unique universal login. So you're given these little cards as uh, IT admins to actually log into every single board that's in your entire district. We have districts that have 2,000, 3,000 boards, and you can go to every single board as a user. So you're not limited to eight people on this one board, if number nine shows up, then you have to take off number three to put number nine, and now number three has to go somewhere else. No, that's not a deal. Uh, that's not the deal with us. So I'm going to take one hey, of my Ryan. cards here and log in. Yeah. Hey Ryan, real quickly, we can't see your uh, webcam. I'm sharing it. Looks like we can see it on another computer here. Oh, he can see it now. Sorry. Um, you're good. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I'm going to take one of these cards. And the cool thing is that we have this the proprietary login screen on the O4s. Uh, there's a couple different options for full login with Google SSO. You can use a QR code in your phone if you don't have your cards. So you can save that to your keychain and log into the board right from here. We also have a really cool thing called a guest mode. So the guest mode itself will uh, let anybody walk up to the board and use it. And then they can uh, not access anybody else's uh, information that's been, uh, you know, if you've saved anything on the board and somebody comes up as a guest, they can't see it on our AMS file system. So I'm going to tap my first card right here on the NFC reader. This is very, very similar to how you, you know, just have to pay when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, buying things at the store. And it's going to pull up this particular account that I've tapped with. So I have a different card here that I, I'm going to tap here in just a second. Uh, and the cool thing is that it's going to remember me. So there's a way that 10 different people on each individual board can be remembered every day. Um, if I tap the other card, it's going to ask me to change the account. And when I change the account, it knows that I want to take this particular account somewhere else. And, um, and you know, if you have like a, a gym, for instance, or, or a library that you're going to be using for, a, you know, just an ad hoc meeting just to get over it, uh, you know, get over a quick meeting, you can uh, tap that particular card. Looks like the screen went a little black here for some reason. Let's see what happens. It's going to try to log in from our cloud service and pull down all the information for this particular card that I have uh, associated with my account. So you can see it's switching over to the admin account here. Um, and now my background pulls up. This is my particular account to see Ryan Hood admin. And what's really great is now I can just go up here and tap Chrome. Since I already have been on this before, I have my tab still open. I got Brain Pop going. I have, uh, what is this one, CuriePod, and that's all going to stay with me. I don't have a login, but it'll actually keep your login status with you as you go from board to board that you're, uh, that you're typically using. And most teachers, they don't really go from board to board. It's just really nice to have the ability to uh, come in for the day, tap your card to log in, and it keeps all of your tabs open, and it keeps all of your AMS files 
with you, which is uh, our, our little system for, for BenQ called AMS, which I like to say all my stuff. So you have Google Drive, Dropbox, and OneDrive, and even Box now that's all available at your fingertips. So this is my actual Google Drive that I can tap within the uh, RP04 board and find all of my files, all of my videos, all of the slides that I need to do from here. So you can have that and also within the same environment, we have the Play Store for from Google. And uh, if you touch these little four dots here, if, or four squares, it will give you the opportunity to go down and see all kinds of different things. Like for instance, like Google Meet, I wanna bring that down and put it way down here and have that available. So once you've logged into Google Chrome, like I have now, now if I tap Play Store, I can come in and you can see that I'm actually logged in to every single Google app that, uh, that that's on the board. It's very important because now you don't have to log in and then log in and then log in and then log in, and all the updates are done within the board's environment. So, uh, so this is coupled with the login, so I can go from teacher to teacher. Also, we have our InstaShare 2, which is a casting feature. We can cast whatever you got uh, up to the board, and also there's the Easy Write, which I'm going to hand over to Francisco real quick to show him show you guys how Easy Write can work in your environment. So we'll just enable the settings real quick. And go back into Easy Write. And I'm going to change the background a little bit darker for you so we can see. Looks like I guess we can see something a little bit easier this way. All right. Now uh, I'll turn it over to Francisco. Thank you. All right. Hey, everybody. Um, so Easy Write is actually our whiteboard software that comes as part of the board. There's nothing special that you have to do. It's also available on Windows, on Mac, and a web version as well. So that your teachers can actually really be flexible with how and where and when they create content. Um, but one of my favorite things about our Easy Write software is the abilities that your teachers will have to create content immediately on the board um, using a whole robust set of features. Um, we're going to bring in actually some different options here to import files. Um, but the big one that I really love is being able to actually utilize the onboard Google Chrome in this split screen environment. So I can actually adjust this a little bit here. If I needed to bring in my chart, my map, my graph, I'm doing a lesson on place value, for example. And my images, I go through here and if I see an image that I like, place value chart like this, Press and hold, I can drag that over and drop it. That may be a little bit too, uh, too many place values. <laughs> okay. All right. On top of the ability to bring those over, we also have the ability to add those to our built-in library here in the background. So we have our different chart options. And what's great is these pages as I create them can be duplicated. I can insert new pages. If I needed to create a copy for my morning, my afternoon, right? These lessons can actually be shared in multiple methods here. We have the ability to save them as a PDF, share them out, save them as an interactive whiteboard file if I have some different softwares, save them as our proprietary EasyWrite software. Um, a QR code will actually allow you to select different pages and have that generated QR code, which can then be scanned by a student device and saved right there real time. Start fresh. We can also import these other file types, um, images, documents such as Microsoft Word, um, EasyWrite files, audio, video, web links, YouTube, 
we can also actually have document cameras plugged directly into the board and access this directly from the whiteboard. She's fresh, she's brand new, ready to go. Um, along with our other tool features that we have here, um, really just looking at ways to help teachers streamline their instruction, saving time, um, because we all know that in the classroom, time is invaluable and trying to get our students to reach, you know, their desired level of growth um, every year is very important. And we feel that with these robust set of tools um, can really be a benefit to teachers in the classroom being more effective, more efficient, and really being able to just overall be more effective in the classroom. All right, Carly, I think that wraps up what we had to show off. Wonderful, Francisco. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. Um, we are now going to, I'm going to leave Francisco and Ryan here in the background so that they can uh, continue to, um, so that they can continue to answer questions. But we are, are now going to, um, um, we're going to go ahead and, um, sorry, hang on one second. That's what I was trying not to do. Um, sorry, guys, trying to get back to where we were at. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move over to um, the next portion of it, which is Q&A. So thank you so much. Sorry, little technical difficulties here. Um, so we have a couple of questions. Oh, I can't do that, can I? All right. Well, we have a couple of questions. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for just a second. And we're going to answer some questions for you guys. So. Um, within our questions that we have for you, um, we had one from Brent Halsley saying um, they really appreciate the option, especially for substitute teachers for guest mode. So thanks guys for pointing that out during the presentation. Um, we had Eric Griffith ask, will there be a firmware update supporting the O3 models with this feature? Ryan or Francisco? Uh, which feature? Let me see. Uh, the the guest mode. No, the O threes. Um, the it's a little bit different. The O fours. Uh, the way that they're built out. Um, so the O threes. What we what we tell what we basically tell people is to um, create like a substitute card and have them log in with that. And, and it doesn't impact anything that the teachers have already set up on there. So that would just be like another quick email, which they probably already have into our uh, into our login system to to let those teachers log into the boards. I gotcha. Uh, perfect. Thank you. Um, Jeremy um, asked. Um, they've noticed that if you're in admin uh, mode and log in to Gmail, it stays logged in when he logs off and use the guest mode of the board. Only happens for my account, not a teacher account, and I am the admin of the IAM. So can you help um, answer that, or is that something that you guys have been experiencing? Uh, yeah, if you're the admin, you you have like a super admin ability. So um, maybe we, we will uh, schedule a call, Jeremy. I remember you, actually. So we need to figure that out, what's going on with yours um, right after that. I'll send you a message. Okay, perfect. Um, he also asked, when is this going to be available? We have a version four board, but when we go to the Play Store, nothing shows up. So I'm guessing he's talking about the capabilities. Yeah, the Play Store, um, remember that we still have our DMS system. You can actually uh, completely lock off the Play Store from teacher use uh, in DMS. We want to make sure that that's not uh, checked uh, on DMS if you need to use the Play Store. If it just tells you to like log in over and over and over, then that, that probably means that you've, uh, you know, maybe click that button that says uh, disable Play Store. Okay. Um, I have Ellen on here and she's asking, are you able to pin specific websites to the desktop, i.e. Clever? Uh, let me, 
think we can actually do that. Um, we can do bookmarks though. So if you're logging in as your teacher account, then your bookmarks can follow you. Um, they're just going to be under the the little um, the four squares on the right hand side. So that's something that you'd set up for yourself. You can actually export all the bookmarks from your Google uh, uh, Google Chrome browser to our AMS system. Okay. And then it'll pop open uh, the the Chrome browser, and you can have it right there. And your your bookmarks can go come from there, or they can come from the uh, uh, you know your sync. If your sync is turned on with Google, then all your bookmarks will also show up. Okay, wonderful. Um, so Jordan has a quick question. Um, I see that you were able to log into all OS Ryan's Google services. In the past, no matter who logged into that BenQ board, that information was stored locally, meaning that whoever, whoever, log, whoever logged in next was still pulling Ryan's login information. Has that changed? Yes, so that's the uh, that's the new thing with these boards is that you can have ten different people's uh, information saved as kind of like a little cache file in the back. Um, but you know, whenever whenever you have like number eleven come up, it automatically will uh, kick off the person that um, has not been using this particular board very often. So yeah, you can go from different accounts to different accounts, and they will uh, all your login info will stay there as long as you've logged into the board one time. It'll remember. Okay, wonderful. Uh, Corey asks, can videos be embedded to EasyWrite from Google Chrome instead of needing the YouTube URL? Yes, they can. You can actually copy and paste those from um, the YouTube app on the RPO4, and it will it will it'll take the URL, but it will uh, whenever you tap it, it'll play within the EasyWrite environment, and that doesn't matter if it's on PC, Mac, or the board itself. Okay, um, we have uh, Daniel asking, drag and drop from Google Images inside EasyWrite 6 makes EasyWrite 6 crash. If you hold, long hold and copy the image, use the paste button on EasyWrite 6 to paste the image. Is that correct? Uh, let me double check. We just had an update on this overnight. So let me see if that works. I'm gonna get Francisco to check that. Daniel knows everything, okay. so if you guys want to reach out to him, he's the best guy in the whole world <laughs> for all of our boards. So yes, wonderful. Let me check on that. Okay, um, we had Mark ask, can we register our own staff ID to log into the boards, or do we need to use BenQ cards? Uh, it depends on the the type of card that you have, because some people have, you know, if you look at your card real closely, it says like HID. It's a different. Um, different type of NFC card. Um, you do get a card with every purchase, uh, you know, one card for every one board. Um, you can go on Amazon if you wanted to and buy some generic cards, you just need a reader. But it really does depend on what card you have in your position right now. We can check on that. Wonderful. Okay, uh, we have another one from Dan. Can a tech coach person create templates for BenQ IFPs and somehow push out Share them to other teachers' boards easily. Uh, the best way is to to create a, a shared Google Drive or shared OneDrive, and just basically drop everything in there. And as long as it's a shared folder, then it will pop up. It doesn't go directly to the board; it goes to the to the user. Okay. Um, uh, Lance is asking: Is there a place on your website or someplace that I can check if existing boards meet the criteria to run this software? Or is it only on the new model of boards? Well, that's that's the thing now is Google finally released uh, the EDLA certification for all manufacturers. Um, so if you don't have with our board, it's called the RP04 model or RM04, um, then that's that's the only way that this particular way can work. Um, the O3s are still really really great. It's just a different different platform but we're the only ones that have you know the remote management and the single user sign up you know multi-user sign on for for the boards but there is a there is something on our website that shows exactly why ours is, is different yep um so we have another question from corey is there still a usb port on top of the rp04 to use a webcam for google meet there is now a usb-c cable on top 
Um, and we do have, um, we're not officially announced, but we do have a new AI camera that plugs directly into the top of both um, our M and RP boards um, that that will, uh, it'll find like who's ever talking in the room and adjust the camera to them. So actually it's a full AI camera, but you can also use any other third party that has USB-C right on top. I still have the USB 3.0. And a 3.0 on top, sorry. It's so it's got both of them, yeah. but it's got a cool little plug-in okay. spot for our new AI camera. Wonderful. Um, Jordan is just saying guest mode is great and giving you a high five. And then yeah. they're also asking, they're also asking firmware updates would be amazing. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna be building at our site for that. Um, the the boards um, on our, o, our, our O2 and O3 boards, they were available online. Uh, we're working on a web page that actually comes out with the O4s if you just needed to, um, you know, use a USB instead of the over the air update. But there's only like two updates right now for this particular model. Okay. Um, Ellen asks EDLA certification. We heard Google will certify for two years. Can you confirm that? I think it's a little bit more actually, because uh, they're uh, the way that they, uh, they do their security updates is every, they, they will certify any device up to five years. So um, I have to double check the EDLA certification. Maybe somebody knows, hold on. Let me text somebody on that one, Ellen. But I know five years is their security, um, um, how long they actually do security updates. So I'm pretty sure that they would match what they're giving with the certification of the EDLA. Okay, good to know. Um, we also, Eric is asking any new features, question mark? Yes, Eric, tons of new features. That's the, that's the big one. The EDLA certification is, is massive. Um, the multi-user login is very, very big for, you know, actually remembering where you were the day before. So that's how we keep teachers, you know, not having to log in um, to, the, uh, to the Chrome browser over and over and over. And you know, remember that, that we're not we're not using any type of onboard PC. This is all baked into the actual board itself. So that's a that's a huge new feature. The other new feature for hardware is that we do have uh, 20 watt speakers now instead of 16, and we do have a front USB and a rear USB C. Uh, and the front one actually does do up to 100 watts of charging. So if you do just want to throw a Chromebox on there, you can have that available too. Okay. Um, will there be an update to O2 models? Uh, actually, there was an update released last night, but it's not going to be, it's just a firmware update that fixes some bugs. Um, just remember that the, the models are different based on what Google has given us. So they're, uh, they're, this particular board is EDLA certified because it has a different chipset and it's Android 13. So if you're running the O2s, you're still on a, a good platform, um, but it doesn't uh, fully go to an EDLA certified board because it was, you know, it was a couple years, uh, a couple years ago before Google gave that to everyone. Okay, and then we had Brant ask, Chrome app is that on boards now, or still need to download an update on the admin side? Uh, on the O4s, yes, there's. It comes with Chrome. Uh, all the other boards, you would have to update um, from the back end side. You'd have to push out the, the, the APK version. Sorry, typing as you talked. All right, and then we had another question from Kellen. Will login info follow under those bookmarks? Yes, they do now on the O4s, Kellen, sir. Uh, they will follow you up to 10 people per board. All right. Um, so they're asking if basically the bookmark following, is that only available on the O4? Jordan's asking that question, or is it also going to be available on the O3? Uh, the, uh, you, you, you can you can do it on the O3. You would just have to manually sign in every time that you would log in. But the bookmarks also can come from the uh, the BenQ AMS system under the 
under the four square, you know, waffle guy. And uh, so any update or any bookmarks that you change would follow you there. And it would just open up within uh, the browser. Okay, so Daniel, our friend Daniel, says his MacBook, iPad 10, and iPhone 12 see the RPO4 board on the InstaShare 2 list, but my Windows 10 PC does not. I have to use the connection code to log in from Windows. I've tried two different networks, home and hotspot, and got the same result. Any info on that? Yes, that, that's a little bug right now that we're investigating. Um, there should be an update coming pretty soon. Um, I have to get the exact date. I think it's the end of the month, but uh, there's InstaShare 2 bug for that, but we're working it out on that 04. Okay. Um, and then we had Brent again asking, what does it involve to upgrade our existing 03 boards to have EDLA components, i.e. Google official apps? Well, that's that's kind of the, the funny thing is that the uh, the 04s um, and every, you know, like I said, every manufacturer just got the okay to have these now. Um, and it's based on the chipset that's inside of the board. So you can't actually update it uh, to be a new board uh, without completely replacing the chipsets, and that's actually not not very uh, not very fun to do. Um, if you wanted to have something that's similar to this on an O3, then uh, you can put the Chrome box onto the O3s. Uh, and it'll support the front uh, USB-C, so it's one cable that would plug in. Okay, perfect. Um, and then William is asking, I have. 403 boards and need to remodel a building and add 60 more boards. I prefer they all be the same. Are they available? The answer uh, right now, William, is depending on how many you need, yes, probably. Yeah, we have 60 RPO3s for sure. Yeah, 7503s for sure. All right. Um, then the next question is. William, maybe you can send another message. Is this going to be possible? Is that just on the question on the boards or is there another question there? I'm not exactly sure because we're kind of running through them as we get them. Um, Ellen asked, my other question is related to updates. Google guarantees updates two years, two years automatic updates. Uh, do we have information on that? Uh, well, that's what I was kind of saying before. Like they, in the years past, it's always been five years. Like even our 03 boards, our 02s, our 01s, they all have five years guaranteed security updates. Um, I think it's just compatibility if, if it gets a little bit older. But if you're getting an 04 right now, the uh, it's running on Android 13. So it's the best of what you got. So I'm, um, as long as the apps are compatible with Android 13, then you know all the Google stuff for sure will be. Uh, and since it's EDLA, this is kind of new waters, but it looks like it's going to be five years for all of the security updates. And then you still have the Play Store direct on the board, so you can update the, the, the board itself. Just think of it kind of like a, a tablet. Right. Um, we had another one from Daniel. Is it, uh, it is wonderful to be able to install apps from the Google Play Store without having to use the debug menu to authorize. So thank you for that. I guess that's just a comment. Thanks, Daniel. Um, Ellen Palmer is saying Chromebooks have been extended to 10 years of automatic updates. So that's why they're asking the questions because I guess Chrome is now guaranteeing a certain number of years. So they want to make sure they're still compatible. Is that correct, Alan? Um, yes, that's what she's trying to get at. So. Um, to the best of our knowledge, from what Ryan is saying, it sounds like it, but we'll get we'll we'll keep you guys updated as we hear stuff. Uh, Brent uh, Brent is asking, so only O4 is the only one that has Chrome built in. O2 and O3s able to be to do it in the future. Brent, as we Brent, as we mentioned before, you can do it now with the O2 and O3s with a Chromebox or an OPS. Um, but as far as compatibility compatibility directly with the board. Um, it doesn't have the Android chipset feature that you would need. Is that correct, Ryan? Yes. Um, all right. And then we also have Jason is asking, can RPO2 become, okay. Uh, yes, Jason is asking, can RPO2 become EDLA capable with an OPS unit in the back? The answer for that is yes. Um, 
And Joe Jordan is letting us know he's going to need 35. I'm not sure if that's the 03 or the 04s over summer as well. Um, so just reach out to, um, I'm going to include Ryan's email and in the chat here in a second. You guys can all reach out to him if you have questions and he can connect you with a sales rep who can answer those questions for you um, directly. Um, Brent is asking, he says, Ryan mentioned that the Chromebox connects with the USB-C. Our RP7503A boards have a, a dedicated expansion area or port where it appears you can slide a box in. Wouldn't that be where the Chromebox expansion gets plugged in? Uh, that's actually, Brent, just for the OPS, you know, uh, PC computer. Uh, the Chromebox does have a little mounting point on the backside. Um, if you wanted to mount it and then basically bring the wire around to the front. I do like having the little uh, USB-C on the front connected to that with the 90 degree adapter. So it doesn't get broken off, but basically it works almost the same. So yeah, it's just a, that's an OPS slot for a PC. Okay, and then we have another one from Jordan. Can you can provide instructions on how we can have multiple Google users on the current O3 boards that we have? That is a great feature on the O4, but need to fit, find a way to do the same thing on our current O3 boards that we installed during the last two years. Uh, Jordan, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna give you Ryan's email. If you can ping him after this, uh, I think that's gonna take a little longer than quick, quick question and answer here on the in the in the session. So we'll get back to you on that. Um, we have one more from Daniel. I have many customers who are running. Uh, RP650, oh, uh, I'm not sure of that model, but I think it's 650, 01, 02, and I'm looking forward to getting them on the 04. I don't see any negatives. Adding the Windows OPS, a Chromebox, or a USB casting device is a great way to continue using the older devices. We would agree with you completely on that. Um, specifically, like the people who have RP03s or even the older models, they're wonderful, but if you want the, the newest and the fastest chipset, a, an external drive, whether it's a Chromebox or an OPS, is going to get you there and make your board basically the same thing that you have now available with the with the RPO fours. Basically, that that OPS or Chromebox is now built into the board because of Chrome or uh, Google finally opening up their Play Store and EDLA capability. So, um, let's see, we have. Um, we have a quick question, another one. Do you have a specific preferred Chromebox recommendation, Ryan, if people want to do that? Uh, I I really do like the uh, the Acer one. Um, I know that um, the Acer one's pretty solid because there's a bunch of different models of it. If you don't want to spend too much money or if you want to spend a lot of money, uh, that one has been, uh, we sold a whole bunch to a school in uh, California that they've been using for years. So it was like a middle grade Acer one. Just depends on what they got right now. I haven't looked in a few months, but yeah, that particular brand is nice. Okay. Um, and Jason, we got your memo on um, a little editing that we can do for this. So thank you guys so much. If there aren't any more questions, I just want to say thank you for attending today's webinar. Um, we will be doing a raffle for everyone who has attended. Um, the webinar for a chance to win uh, RP6504 board. Um, a recording of this, a cleaned up recording of this for, for Jason uh, will be available um, on our YouTube channel shortly or in a link from today's session. Um, if you have any questions, I'm going to really quickly in the chat, I'm gonna put um, Ryan, I'm gonna put Ryan's email address in there for all of you. So please make sure you guys grab it. If you are interested, I'm gonna put it actually in the chat as well. Um, but I wanna thank you guys so much for attending today's webinar. Um, I hope that this has answered a lot of questions for you. And we look forward to having you join us. We're gonna be at FETC next week. We're gonna be at TCEA here in Texas in early February. And we'll be at SD in June, as well as multiple local events throughout the year. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to your local sales rep or to Ryan or myself, Carly Burton Soleil at BenQ.com. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for your time, and we look forward to chatting with you next month. Have a great rest of your day, everyone.